so uh, I'm going to do a bit of an experiment on you. Uh, I'm going to try and get through 30 slides in 20 minutes and not delay your tea. Um, uh, of course, uh, I'm sure Wes can, I can confirm as the product marketing manager for our mentors verification IP that um, our VIP has no bugs. <laughs> Uh, first of all, I want to spend the first half of my 20 minutes talking about um, the latest Wilson Research Group um, functional verification study done by Harry Foster, who was here two or three years ago to present the 2012 version. Um, uh, it, the, the survey actually had um, uh, three, th um, three times as many people replying as it did to the 2012, so the survey size has increased by 3x. Um, so here's something I'm sure you're all familiar with. Basically, designs are getting um, larger and larger. 31% um, of all designs are over 80 million gates. 17% are over 500 million gates. Um, this is gates of logic. This is not including uh, memory and that kind of thing. Um, I don't know how quite how tethered I am. But the interesting thing is on the far left-hand side, it, it actually there's a sort of fat tail, if you like, where there are some very big very big designs out there. Um, um, it's an SOC world, so there are more and more processors on, on board our chips. 70% um, uh, um, of all designs have some processors. 45% um, have uh, two or more. Uh, again, we have a fat tail. You know, there are um, quite, quite a few designs out there that have very large numbers of processors, 50, 100, uh, whatever. Um, uh, of interest to the people here, uh, verification consumes a majority of project time. Uh, and this trend is increasing. There's, there's um, quite a few designs where the amount of time, the amount of um, project time spent in verification is in fact uh, over 80%. Uh, the average has moved up from 2007, where it was at 46%, um, to 2014. Today we're at 57%. That's quite a big increase. You know, that's a statistically significant increase. Um, and another thing that's happened is, um, this has happened actually in the last two years, uh, but the average number of verification engineers has um, overtaken the average number of design engineers on any project. Um, it's just been part of a trend, it's going sort of, to be, we could have predicted it was going to happen, but in the last two years, since the last survey, it has happened. Um, this is quite interesting. Um, the amount of time that designers spend doing verification, it was rising until two years ago and then it fell. Uh, and um, there's quite a lot of uh, um, discussion and speculation we can have about why this happened. I think it's to do with the widespread adoption of UVM, which means that um, designers actually can't do verification in the way that they used to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, this slide is interesting. Basically, there's been no improvement or deterioration in the way that um, uh, the accuracy of our project management. This may have nothing to do with any technical thing at all. It may just be to do with the relationship between project managers, um, sales targets, and the engineers. Um, it might just be a fact of life that we'll never do anything about. But nevertheless, it, it, um, it's an interesting slide. Um, another interesting thing, you could view this slide as uh, either uh, an improvement or a deterioration. Um, so there's been no real, um, uh, no particularly significant change in um, the amount of designs that um, achieve first silicon success, you know, no respins. Um, there are some which have quite a few respins, but there's been um, no particularly significant change. Now, you could say we have a problem and we haven't solved it. The other way of looking at this is the sort of half glass full approach, which says, well, actually, things have got a lot harder, a lot bigger, a lot more processes on board, and we're with, and things haven't actually got worse, which is a victory of sorts. Look at it, half glass, half gla glass half empty, half glass half full, whichever way you want to. Um, what is going on with uh, verification language um, adoption? Um, basically, if you look at this, everything is declining except for system Verilog and C and C++. So uh, VHD is declining, Vera E is declining. System C, surprisingly, as a verification language, uh, it's declining slightly, but I don't think that's particularly signif significant statistically. System Verilog uh, between 2007 and 12 had a massive increase. You could also look at this and say it's plateauing out. You know that um, the benefits we can get from 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 this, uh, the, basically the adoption curve is a mature adoption curve. 
Um, so that's that. What I just presented was the trends in ASIC. Um, I know uh, Doug Amos is actually doing a UK and Ireland-based survey about um, uh, what's going on with FPGA and verification. So if you're more interested in this, I encourage you to go to that uh, talk. I think it's immediately after lunch. Um, so to compare uh, the sort of the um, the number of processes on your average FPGA versus ASIC. It's a similar trend, um, although uh, you know um, uh, um, uh, FPGA uh, suppliers are putting uh, processes on board uh, on board their chips. Um, it's not as um, the ASIC curve is much higher at the far end. You've got that fat tail on FPGAs you haven't. But essentially, I think this is the same picture on FPGAs as it is on ASICs. Uh, the amount of time spent uh, during verification, there's the, uh, in green, there's the uh, ASIC curve. I think this shows a similar kind of trend in FPGAs, but perhaps less advanced. That um, FPGA, FPGA, design, FPGA project teams, sorry, are using, uh, are investing an increasing amount of time in verification, um, but it's perhaps not as advanced, not as extreme as it is on some of the ASICs, and I think that's actually driven by design size. Um, and the project, the project management curve, um, it's the same. There's nothing you can do about this. Uh, iterations, uh, interestingly, there was a fat tail. We, if the survey only asked seven or more. It didn't ask, are you doing 20? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> but it would have been interesting to have a look at that curve um, on, the, on the other side of the, um, on, the, on, the far, on the far end. And it's quite similar to what's going on in, in the ASIC world. Uh, language adoption trends, I think this is similar. This, this shows to me that FPGA verification is moving in the same direction as ASIC verification, but maybe um, a few years behind. So we've got a um, much higher proportion of VHDL uh, verification in the FPG world, FPGA world, but it is decreasing. Um, and the system Verilog adoption is increasing significantly, uh, but it's not at the 70% or so that you get um, in the ASIC world. Uh, so that's a, a quick run through the survey, survey results. Um, so what, what, do, what do mental graphics, what, what are we going to do about this? Well, um, uh, as um, the people from Cadence, I'm sure, from Synopsis have said, basically it, we need a sort of integrated world. We need a, an enterprise verification platform um, where the um, stimulus, the measurement and analysis, and debug tools work across a whole number of platforms. Uh, the, uh, the key to that, and why I am here, if you like, uh, is, um, of course, you need um, a common set of verification <coughs> infrastructure in order to work in this multi-platform world, but you also need verification IP um, to work in this multi-platform uh, multi world, where we're going from prototyping through to formal simulation, emulation, and uh, FPGA prototyping. Um, so here's our verification IP. It has what you'd expect. So it's based on sta it's based on um, um, standard system Verilog, UVM. It has the architecture you're familiar, you're familiar with. It has a complete uh, test suite, checking and coverage, and it's um, it's aimed at high performance verification, both in simulation where our our models are optimized for performance on um, on our simulator, but also um, um, they are synthesizable for use um, in uh, in emulation and in the hardware world. Um, so here's, here's, our, here's our protocol uh, library. You can have a look at it, talk, talk to me later. It's an extensive one, but it won't satisfy all your needs like most of them don't. Um, it's, based on, uh, it's based on UVM. This shouldn't, be, this shouldn't surprise you and is like other verification IP. We have test plans um, which you can, which I'll relate back to the spec and you can use to validate your verification if you like. Uh, and we have test we have tests to go with um, that that test plan. And it's a very animated slide. Um, uh, to do debug, we have um, protocol level protocol level debug, which relates transactions down to signal level and vice versa. So you can track your bugs in a way which makes sense to you, rather than just looking at the pin wiggling. Uh, and we have lots of assertions to guarantee that um, everything's working correctly as you might expect. Um, that's the product, but the problem is that um, protocols are complex, you know, and particularly, you know, the, the, the complex serial protocols, PCI Express, Ethernet back in the day used to be relatively simple, but that's moving in the same direction, uh, USB, the storage protocols. Um, so basically, the, the protocols themselves are getting more complicated, but as I'm sure I don't need to tell you, the, um, the, 
the, the time scale pressures and the pressures we're all under with uh, singlets, the same size team having to produce, having to verify um, much bigger designs uh, is, um, is increasing the pressure. Um, so part of, part of the solution to this is um, uh, we need to be able to reuse a lot of tests. Another part of the solution to this is actually increasing the speed of the test, which is going to um, acceleration or, or emulation. Um, so our, uh, our VIP, it has the same features that other people's uh, VIP has, but I think this is what is unique about our verification IP. Um, so we don't do design IP, so we are independent from um, uh, from the design IP and we do find bugs in IP that is well used in the marketplace from um, uh, IP and FPGA um, companies. Um, all the test stimulus, coverage, test plans, slave models, scoreboards, compliance test suites, all this kind of thing, this is unencrypted. You can go and have a look and see whether you think we've done a good job. Uh, it's unencrypted UVM compliance system Verilog. Uh, but I think the key to successful adoption of verification IP is actually, it's related to the product, but it's more than the product. It's to do with the whole deployment process for verification IP, because um, the protocols are complex, you know. Uh, so somehow, somehow either that, the, the complexity um, needs to be ameliorated and made into something that you, you can easily adopt. Uh, so we have a, um, a to start with, uh, the way we, uh, deploy our verification IP, we have a, a standardized pre-sales um, discovery process where we ask you what are your verification aims. If you're doing five verification with PCI Express, that's very different to if you're doing SOC integration and you're just taking somebody's endpoints and integrating it. Um, support requests to get meaningful answers within 24 hours, actually usually it's quicker, usually it's within the working day. Um, we always have expert advice and help uh, uh, readily available for you, whether that's remotely or on site. Um, importantly, I think we have um, consulting packages. So um, it's fine if you're an expert in the protocol or if you're, uh, um, or, and if you're an expert in UVM, but you may be not an expert in one or other of those. So we have both predefined and custom uh, VIP consulting packages which are available to you if you, if you need them. Uh, and we also have, uh, although we aren't design IP suppliers, we have established partnerships with a number of, uh, uh, the, um, of IP suppliers where we have basically produced pre-validated pre verification kits. So if you're using that design IP, we can supply you with a verification kit which gets you up and running extremely quickly. Uh, so, you know, uh, Here's, here's what I would argue is our return on investment from your point of view for, ver for our verification IP. Um, basically, uh, with, with other solutions, that you have to learn a lot before you can get anywhere. Uh, but um, with all the things I mentioned in the previous slides, um, you can actually get up and running and move up that, um, that learning curve while you've got something up and running and while, while you're actually being productive. So, that's the end of my talk. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we do have time for questions. So what extent do you think um, the actual activities of verification, or the proportion of time spent doing verification and design really changing and how much is due to changing the label of the engineer from design engineer to verification engineer? Uh, so the question sorry, was about how much is really changing and how much is due to the changing of the labels between design and verification engineers. Um, we don't have any statistical way of analyzing that. My guess is it's a bit of both. Um, that, uh, that the advance in verification technology, technologies, which Wes was saying has created um, good improvements in productivity, has, um, you know, has meant that people who had the designer label on would have had, now have to be, have the verification label on. But I think there is a trend there um, towards uh, more of a focus on verification. For some designs, I mean, for some designs will just be a respin, and there's not much verification, you just rerun the old tests. Other designs um, with these uh, sort of massively complex, um, huge fabrics, you know, 50, 100 processors or whatever, I believe that there is a lot of verification effort going on there. So, picking up a thing from 
earlier, uh, Martin spoke about simplicity. Uh, and I think you hinted the fact that maybe the end was too difficult for design designers. I don't know if it's time cheap or not. But the, I think a lot of people do think the end is quite complex. Is Mark Mentor working towards trying to make it simple, at least abstract, and set up the ways to make uh, yes, and you could blame me personally. <laughs> um, uh, the way I put this is that uh, UVM and system Verilog and coverage and test plans and all this sorts of thing does what it's supposed to do well. It is too complex. So I would have, you know, I think you could delete about. 30,000 lines of code from the UVM, then it wouldn't make much difference. Uh, but um, uh, I think it does do its job well. I think there are now other jobs. Wes was hinting at it with his FPGA um, verification solution uh, and linking that back to the, um, the simulation world might give us a, a way of ha having much more sim uh, simple methodologies, perhaps more software orientated methodologies. Um, uh, but for, for what it does, UVM is the right thing, I think, uh, but there might be other things coming along. Whether they're actually system Verilog based or not, I don't know. Be my rough answer. Okay, I think that's all for more questions, and then we'll go to... We know UVM is complex, and uh, it also has the performance impact. So, if, and going to version 1.2, the performance impact is even bigger. So, isn't there a drive from the EDU vendors uh, into Accelera uh, to have a smaller version of the EDU that can be reduced at compile time? Uh, because number of features are there which are not required for uh, each and every user. Can you just repeat the question? <laughs> the, the question, if I can summarize, was UVM has a performance impact. It's getting worse. Can't, we, can't the EDA industry do something about it in relation to Accelera? This is a fair enough summary. Um, honestly, no. <laughs> right? Honestly, UVM is what it is. It brings about a whole load of uh, um, important advantages to do with reuse. Um, uh, reuse of training, reuse of verification IP, reuse of test benches, etc. Um, and that is an important part of its payoff. Um, to be honest, for my personal opinion, it is what it is. You know, if you want your simulations to go faster, buy a fast simulator, right? Uh, but um, I, that, that, doesn't, uh, that, that doesn't get away from the problem you're raising, but I think there will be other solutions to the problem you're raising which won't come from making UVM go 10% quicker or something like that because we need 100x, 1000x, whatever, to really um, get step changes in our productivity. There is a market opportunity for the EDM right, so they can invite the EDM right somewhere. <laughs> Just uh, curiosity, can you, can you describe the form you use to verify your VIPs in the micrographics? <laughs> <laughs> the question was basically how do we validate our verification IP. There's all sorts of things we do. We, we, we eat our own dog food, so uh, we do the whole, um, uh, we look at the spec, we do the test plan, we do, our, we do the coverage, all that sort of thing. We run whatever compliance test suites are out there and we also do, uh, we validate against whatever design IP we can find, whether that's customer, internal or, or whatever. Um, they are the three basic techniques, to be honest. But I welcome a longer conversation about this with you. Thank 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 you.